welcome to another edition of Greyhound Football. And we have the four city Mustangs and the Newport Greyhounds here on Cable 15. David Black along with Randy Kopechka. And Randy, the hounds on the road once again playing at Forest City. David, that's right. We're real excited still about the game last week. That was a great victory by the Greyhounds. Uh, we've shown we can play real well on the road in about as hostile of an environment as you can get over at Osceola. Real pleased with, uh, with the play over there. Our offense can't seem to come together quite a bit. It was quite a bit more consistent. We talked the week before about needing to get some first downs and move the football more consistently. They did that. The defense uh, bended quite a bit, allowed a lot of yards, but did not break that often. I was able to make the big plays at the end of the game, so uh, just tickled it the death about the performance. Hopefully we can carry it on tonight. Randy, this Forest City football team comes into the contest with a one and one record, having lost their first ball game of the year to our conference foe and opponent, the Win Yellow Jackets, 13 to nothing, in a football game that uh, Forest City had almost 400 yards of total offense, but didn't put any points on the board. And then uh, last week, Forest City just uh, annihilated Mariana, 45 to 14. What can our fans expect to see here on the replay? David, they can obviously move the football. Wins got a tremendous defense. Wins re really noted for defensive football. And even though Forest City did not score, they really got a lot of yards. Uh, they do run out of the wishbone, and they run uh, some true op two triple options out of the wishbone. And of course, that's very difficult for your defense to get ready for. It's a, it's an offense that most defenses don't see very often, so you're really not used to it. And you've got a you've got three or four days to prepare for, it, and it's tough to do it. You've got so many uh, things to look for on the triple option, and it's tough to get ready for. As you saw, and that was referee Brad Davidson, formerly of Newport, Arkansas, with the call. Four City won the toss and elected to defer into the second half, and the Greyhounds elected to receive the football. Very possible some uh, uh, great victory jitters coming in. Maybe a little let down by this Greyhound football team, Randy. Is that a possibility? Well, it's a possibility, Dave. I know Coach Keppel has been concerned about that this week and from what I've heard from him. But, the, you know, in the pregame, the kids really looked like they were ready to play. When they ran out on the field, they were led by Robert Kendall, and he appeared to be really fired up trying to get the guys ready to go. So I really believe uh, Coach Keppel has shown to be a good motivator, and I believe they'll be ready to play. I'd like to remind everybody that here on Cable 15, the Newport Greyhound football broadcast is brought to you by Union Planners Bank of Northeast Arkansas, Arkansas State University, BB Newport, Modern Woodman of America, Baltz Equipment Company, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Taylor Ford and Taylor Chrysler, Jackson's Funeral Home in Newport, the Neighborhood Cleaners, White River Ambulance and Paramedic, Premier Video, George Kell Motors, Newport Federal Savings Bank, the U.S. Pizza Company, Harris Hospital, Newport Electronics, your radio shack, Dealer, Lakeside Chevrolet Buick Geo, Riverboat Real Estate, the Dairy Queen, New York Life Insurance and Securities, and Brand Body Shop. Two big football games the last two weeks by the Hounds. You talked a lot about the Osceola ball game. What a big victory for the Hounds going on the road. This is the second of three ball games on the road. Uh, this coming week, the Hounds will be traveling to Ridgecrest before they get a home playing date against the Wynn Yellow Jackets. That's exactly right, David. A very tough early schedule, like I said last week. There were people that were actually predicting, or not necessarily predicting, but uh, thinking about the possibility of an 0-3 start. We went on probably the toughest game last week, was on the road at Osceola. We thought it would be the toughest game, and we really jumped out early, played extremely well, and got that lead and held on to it. And you know, I, I expect us to play rep well on the road. We've got a good crowd over there cheering us on. Whether it's 7 a.m. out in the field or late at night in a farmer's kitchen table, you may find Hank Pierce and his 16 years of agriculture lending experience working hard for Jackson County area farmers. Call Hank at Union Planners Bank, 523-7500. Well, I'm kind of looking forward to this ball game. Our vantage point is on top of the press box. We are right beside Galen doing the camera work, and uh, it ought to be a dandy of a football game. It ought to be, Dave. We're outside here. We hope the rain holds off. It's trying to cloud up, and it rained here in Forest City a little bit earlier, but hopefully it'll hold off. It looks like we're ready to kick the ball. It is Kendall along with Chris Ellis deep for Newport. It'll be fielded by Kendall at the seven yard line. He crosses the 15 to the 20, tries to get outside and tackled about the 19 yard line. Good defensive play by the special teams of Forest City. Forest City is a football team that plays five, six, and seven guys on both sides of the line of scrimmage. A very talented defensive team, a team that can run. 
That's exactly right, Dave. They run to the football real well, got good speed. Uh, hopefully we can, uh, with our depth and our, our people guys going only one way, we can wear them down and maybe really take over late in the game if we need to. Hopefully we can jump out early, though. Zach Harris will be your starting quarterback for the Greyhounds. Second start in a row for Zach. The Hounds open up with a split man, Mosby. On the left, I formation with Brand in motion. Handoff is to little Chris Ellis, and Chris Ellis crosses the 20 and hit from behind after he gains about four yards to the 23-yard line. Just a simple I-formation power play. Pick up a four to bring up second down and six. All right, David, just basic football. Had Michael Brand, number 44, in motion there, and he always does an excellent job blocking. Had a good job there on the right side, from the right side of that offensive line. Second down and six. Reardon will be the split receiver out of your screen. I formation once again with Brand at the blocking back. Lil Ellis is going to be stacked up at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Might have lost a yard. Good defensive penet penetration that time by the Four City defense. Dave, we talked going down here or coming down here about the need to really try to get some things going in the air and maybe outside. They're really going to key on Lil Ellis probably. Need to probably going to go upstairs right here. He did lose one yard, third down and seven, just underway. We have no score here in the contest. Haywood is the center. Hand off to Lil Ellis, great trap block, and he is in the secondary. He's at the 40, to the 50, to the 40. Nobody's going to catch him. Chris Ellis will go the distance. 78 yards for the touchdown on third down and seven, and the explosive speed of the young sophomore Chris Ellis, and what a bunch of good blocking up front by that Newport offensive line. David, just tremendous blocking. He had a huge hole, and when you give Chris Ellis a huge hole, it's all over. Nobody's going to catch him. It was just a foot race, but nobody had a chance to catch him. Just, uh, you know, we've seen that the first three games this year, and hopefully we can continue that. Uh, Scott Skelton, uh, deep snapper here. Jason Cathy will hold, and Chris Dillon to attempt the extra point. That quick, less than a minute and a half gone, a minute 25 in the first quarter, and Chris Ellis goes 78 yards for the score, and he is just simply dangerous. Kick is up, and it is across, and it's good. So Dillon's kick makes the score seven to nothing. Extra point kick, good by Dillon. David, kind of like the Jonesboro game here, not, not too much on the first couple of plays, but break that big play, the ability we showed in the, in the first game of the year. And, uh, you know, if they can't stop that, it could be a long night for the Mustangs. Our defense really needs to keep the momentum going right here and stop them, and uh, we'll be in good shape. So important early, Randy, to come on the road, and especially not that the third down and seven was such a great big play early in the ball game, but, boy, to get on the scoreboard right now, I mean, it's so important. We played less than a minute and a half. We already have a score. Right, Dave. We were concerned about, you know, the kids being uh, maybe uh, trying to live off of last week's victory, but they've showed they come to play, and uh, hopefully our defense can really step up here and, and stop this wishbone offense. It's going to be tough to stop, but we, I think we'll go up to, up to the challenge. Chris Dillon will be the kicker for the Hounds. Going deep will be Galat, G-O-L-A-T-T, -T, number six. He's a 145-pound speedster and only a sophomore. Arkansas State University is a great place to start. Ask about the wide variety of programs that they have. A great place to start. ASU BB Victory Boulevard in Newport. Dillon's kick goes to Galat. Galat fields it at the seven. He's across the 10 to the 15 to the 20. Great speed by Galat, tackled from behind by Kathy at about the 33, 32-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. We'll call it the 33. So Four City will set up shop. Wishbone offense, they love to run the option play, a true option football team. Split receiver out of your screen to the left. Same formation that we saw last week against the Osceola Seminoles. Quarterback sneak for good yardage up across the 35 to about the 37-yard line. Four City coming into the ball game. Feel like that they can move the football on the ground against this Newport defense. All right, Dave, wishbone again, very difficult to stop, especially when they run the true triple option. I'd like to give credit for Robert Kendall on that play a while ago. Michael McCain is the quarterback for the Mustangs. It'll be second down and four. Fullback inside. Makes good yardage up near the first down marker across the 35 to 
the 37-yard line. He's going to be about a half yard short. It'll be third down and short. Very quick off the offensive line. These four city Mustangs. Exactly, David. Uh, Kenneth Tate on the play right there, but some good blocking. Pretty good uh, running area right there. Third down and one. Split receiver left. Big splits by the offensive line. Quarterback sneak for yardage up across the 40, and he is nailed at the 40-yard line. Good hit by the Newport defense, but enough on the quarterback sneak for a first down. Dean Holt on the play, number 88. Excellent job holding on and getting the guy down, but a first down for Forest City. Why does life insurance come in different plans? Ask the good folks at Modern Woodman of America. They're located at 106 South State Street in Newport. Brenda Williams, Larry Jordan, the district manager. Their number is 523-9178. Nine minutes to play, first quarter. The Hounds lead it seven to zip. Quick pitch, right side. Running room, cutting back against the grain. Good defense, but now that's Galat with the football. And he is the speedster as he breaks out across the 45-yard line and down across the way. Did not go out of bounds at the 47. We had him trapped a couple of times, but that's the sophomore running back, Galat, only 145 pounds. All right, Dave, good speed right there. We didn't lock up very well. Had a hold of him a couple of times, but just couldn't bring him down. I think that was Kenyon Miller, number 24, finally making the play, but had it stopped, and guy got about six or seven yards out of it. This is what this four city football team have done for the last two weeks. They've moved it up and down the field against Wynn, also against Mariana, scored 45 against Mariana, zero against Wynn. Look at the splits in that offensive line. Fullback inside, good yardage up the middle, across the 50, down to about the 40. Eight yard line, 47 yard line now. First down and 10 for the Four City Mustangs. Putting together a nice little drive here. The drive started their own 33 yard line. They've moved the chains twice. Baltz Equipment Company in Tuckerman is your New Holland dealer. See Joe Trotter or Galen Gardner for all your New Holland farm equipment needs. David, just typical wishbone play, just running the football and, and grinding up yardage. Uh, just typical for that kind of style of the defense. Uh, Ty Tyson Watkins was on the tackle a while ago. Split receiver at the top of your screen, you see. Full back inside, breaks a tackle across the 40, and he may go score. He's to the 30, over to the 20, down inside the 20, to the 15, 14, 13, and 12. Breaking tackles about the 35 in the 30-yard line. Is their big 225-pound fullback for the Mustangs, Bryant Barden. So, for a city now, on the attack with 7.40 to play in the first quarter. It's seven to nothing in favor of the Newport Greyhounds. Split receiver out of the screen to the right. Big splits by that offensive line. Quick pitch right, first penalty flag of the contest, and let's see what this is gonna be. Has to be a dead ball foul of some kind, which usually means illegal motion. Dead ball foul, motion against the offense. So the Hound defense gets a break. Randy Forsetti is here to play. That's exactly right, David. Good execution of the wishbone. Uh, good job of breaking tackles by several of their runners. We've had them locked up on about every play, it seems like, but they've been able to run hard and break loose. Need to stiffen up right here. Got them uh, in a first down 15 situation. The ball back at the 17-yard line. 7-18 to play here in the first quarter. Second back through. Crosses the 15 and down at the 14 in a better defensive stand that time. By the Newport defense. David looks like Kenyon Miller and Robert Kendall on the play. A pickup of about three yards. Going to bring up about a second down and 12. Watkins also in off on the tackle coming off the bottom of that pile. Split receiver to the right. McCain, the quarterback, number 10, he's a solid performer. Here he comes right side, option. Cuts back against the grain as he goes inside the 10-yard line to about the eight. First time that we've really seen the true triple option where he faked to the fullback inside and tried to take it to the corner. Exactly right, Dave. That's just the hallmark of a wishbone football right there and a good job by the quarterback. Hounds lead it. Seven to nothing, thanks to a 78-yard run by Chris Ellis with 10.35 to play in the first quarter. We're down to 6.15 to play in Four City, knocking on the door. Third down and six at the eight-yard line. 
He's going to throw. He looks. He's in trouble. Almost sacked. Gets away from the pressure. Cuts back against the grain, trying to get down inside the five-yard line. He's going to come up a little short, is McCain. The pressure was there on the outside. Just couldn't come up with the sack, but the ball will be placed about the six-yard line. It'll be fourth down and four, and a decision for Four City, as you see. The field goal team come on to the field. Four City going to go for three. They really surprising. I figured with their wishbone offense, they'd go for it right here. I'd like to give credit for Rob Tucker for being in on that last tackle. Have to call a timeout. Kicker having problems getting his shoe on with the timeout. The break reminds you that at Kentucky Fried Chicken on 2200 Malcolm, Ed Newport tried the new Triple Crunch Chicken Strip Sandwich plus potato wedges for $2.99. That's three white meat strips on a Pepperidge Farm bun with special sauce and potato wedges, only $2.99 at KFC. Great selection of new and used automobiles and year-end clearance sale going on on 96s right now at the Taylor dealerships. Joe Taylor Ford and Joe Taylor Chrysler, both located on Highway 67 North in Newport. Their numbers are 523-5559 for the Ford store and 523-4774 for the Chrysler store. Visit one of their showrooms the next opportunity you get. David, last week, especially late in the game, our defense showed the ability to stiffen near the goal line, stopped OCO there a time or two, and hopefully we can do that right here. You know, they, they've driven down the field pretty well, but they haven't scored yet in a big play right here, fourth down, about three or four yards to go. Felix Normant will be doing the kicking for Forest City. You know, I'm sure they've seen the film of the Osceola game last week, and a fake could be in there. Exactly. In their repertoire of trick plays. We've got a pole in the way. We'll do the best we can. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is up, and it is good. 23-yard field goal for Four City. They make score seven to three for City. Our defense did a pretty decent job there again, stiffening, not letting them get the touchdown. We still got a lead. Our offense needs to come back and get some big plays here again, drive the ball down the field. If we can make it 14 to three, we'll be in pretty good shape going in uh, going into the rest of the first quarter here. Seven to three in favor of the Greyhounds. The Hounds, if you just joined us, only took a minute 25, a three-play drive. The drive was for 81 yards. A 78-yard run by Chris Ellis. Extra point kick by Dillon was good. The Hounds led it 7 to nothing. And on Four City's initial drive, they drive 67 yards, capped off by the 23-yard field goal by Felix Normant. Jackson's Funeral Home of Newport, Newark, and Harrisburg, proud to be a sponsor of area athletic teams. The Jackson's Funeral Home, located 1910 Malcolm Avenue in Newport. Ellis and Kendall Deep. We've already seen the speed of little Chris Ellis, and this kick is down inside the three to the two, and it's Kendall. Kendall across the 15 to the 20, looks to get outside as he reverses field, and he's going to be nailed about the 18-yard line. Got it up to the 20, went back to his left over towards the Newport stands. And Four City showing some speed on their special team. So pretty close to the same starting field position we had on our first possession. All right, David, a really good job by the kicking team of 4C right there. Uh, you know, in some of the previous games we've seen, Kendall probably would have had a real good chance to break loose there with his speed, but 4C does a good job of containing him and stopping him. Newport, high formation, same formation we saw the first three plays. Here comes Brand to the right. Harris, option play right, fakes it, pulls up over the 20-yard line. He's smacked hard at the 20 as Zach crosses the 20. We'll give him credit up to the 21, a gain of three. That'll bring up second down and seven. Zach running the option play right that time. David, nice fake by Zach right there. Looked like he might pitch it, uh, cut it inside. Got stuck pretty good right there, but got right back up. Got about three yards. We've got a second down and seven situation right here. Kendall will be in the ball game, and he'll be the split receiver to the left-hand side. I back Sean Ellis and Chris Ellis. Fake to Chris. 
Zach's pass to Kendall. Kendall is open. Interference should be called, and it is called at the 50-yard line. No doubt the defensive back was all over Robert Kendall's back. Kendall would have caught that ball had he not been interfered with. David Kendall had a beat on that ball. Definitely would have caught it. Four City fans a little upset, but, I mean, there was absolutely no question about the call. Uh, the guy got on his back before the ball got there, and Kendall didn't have a chance because of that interference. You saw Brad Davidson with the call right there. They'll have to talk to the Newport captains. Bring the football back to the line of scrimmage and penalize them 15 yards, I believe, is what the penalty is going to be. The ball was resting near the 20. Officially, we'd called it the 21. Ought to mark it up to about the 36-yard line. Let's see. Exactly where it's going. Warren Williams, Hoxie's own right there. He's gone too far. Maybe I believe that's about 16 or 17 yards on that. He's going to put it back where he's supposed to. 4-21 to play in the first quarter. It's a 7-3 Newport Greyhound lead. Luke Redden will be the split, uh, split receiver. He goes left. Sean Ellis, Chris Ellis. Brand, Brown, and Holt on the right side. Quick pitch to Chris Ellis. Left, great block by Sean Ellis. Got a little room to the left side. Got a break at the 50, 40, 30. One man to beat. 65 yards for Chris Ellis, and the young sophomore is simply sensational. Great block by Mike Brand and Sean Ellis. David, once again, Mike Brand, number 44, uh, Big Ellis, number 6. And once Chris gets that seam, we say it every time, but nobody's going to catch him. And it was pretty obvious that he was long gone, 65 yards, 13-3. Electrifying this sophomore is. Great blocking by the Newport backfield. Plus the offensive line. Bo Lacey, Haywood Turner all over there on the left side. Skelton to Kathy to Dillon with a penalty flag in the air. The kick is good, but let's check out the penalty. Came from the umpire who lines up behind the defensive line. Still discussion going on. I think the extra point kick is going to be good. They're talking to the Newport captains. Whatever the penalty is, the Hounds are going to decline, and they lead it by the score of 14 to 3. 408 to play less than eight minutes, and Ellis has got two long runs, one for 78, one for 65. David Chris Ellis already has 146 yards rushing. That puts him on a pace for about a 600-yard night tonight. Well, if, if he gets another possession here in the first quarter, he may be on possession for a 1,000-yard night. The Neighborhood Cleaners, 101 Lindley Street, Newport. Your new dry cleaning and laundry service. They're locally owned by Benji Kimberly and Tyler Harris. Specials that they have going on right now, $1 shirts, laundered, starched, and pressed, good till September the 24th, plus comforters. Bring your comforters in, get them dry clean. King size, $12, queen, $10, and twin, $8. So the penalty is going to be marked off against Four City on the kickoff. It was a major. Newport would normally kick off from their own 40-yard line, but now they get the advantage of kicking in Four City territory at the Four City 45. Right, David. Expect Chris to put this ball in the end zone unless they would try something and squibbing or something on the ground because of the field position. But I really expect Chris to get this ball in the end zone and hopefully no return. I've often said down through the years it is so hard to drive the football 80 yards. What I know, the Hounds have driven it 81, and the Hounds have driven it 82, thanks to two big long runs by Chris Ellis. You can't beat the speed, you can't teach it, you can't coach it. Dillon's kick will be filling in the end zone, and so that will be a touchback, and Forest City will bring it back out to the 20-yard line. Only 4.08 to play in the first, less than eight minutes gone, and the Hounds lead at 14 to 3, Randy. David, if our defense can stop them right here, and we can go score one more time, that probably would you know, have a good chance of demoralizing Forest City, so really some big plays right in here. If we can stop them here, we're going to be in excellent shape. Four City first drive started at their own 33-yard line. They drove it 67 yards for the field goal. First down and 10 at the 20. 
Quick pitch to the right side. Little running room outside. Running back clobbered as he goes across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Fourth City has tremendous quickness. Right, David. It's been hard to stop them for any uh, negative yardage here. We've had some chances, or at least stop them at the line of scrimmage, but they've got good speed. Give Kenyon Miller, M Miller some credit right there for the stop. That was Curtis Davis with the carry. He's the left halfback out of the wishbone. Split receiver will come to the left side. Quarterback is McCain. Inside trap play to the big fullback, and Kenneth Tate's there. Fumble late, but after the whistle. The big fullback crossing over the 30-yard line. First down and 10 as he picked up several yards on the play. Ball will be marked at the 31. David, good job by Kenneth Tate right there. We've talked about you know having some guys locked up and not tackling them tonight, but Kenneth held on right there, and there was no way that running back was going to get loose. Good job by number 21 right there. Tucker comes out of the football game. He's the nose guard. It's kind of the, the glue on the defense. He's constantly in the opposing team's backfield. Miller is 60. 85 is Watkins. Good defensive play coming across. Dean Holt, 88 from a defensive end position. Holding Forest City to a gain of short yardage. Give him credit for two. It'll bring up second down and eight. 2.52 remaining here in the first quarter, and the Hounds lead it 14-3. Join Bud Black each Friday night, KLLN Radio 90.9. He and Paul Duggar with the live calls. Quick pitch right side, good defensive play by Brand, and now the pursuit comes up, and Mike Brand makes that play. Brand from a defensive end position makes that running back cut back up inside to where he had help coming. Brand didn't get on the tackle, but giving the assist. Exactly right, David. I'm here keeping the tackle chart, Mike. Brand won't get his name on that, but he really made the play. He turned it in where there was two guys waiting for him, and there was no chance for any more yardage. Third down and six from the 34. The ball must cross a little over the 41-yard line for a first down. 2.08 remaining in the first, an 11-point Greyhound lead. Yes, we said, 11-point lead already. Third and six. McCain looked like he's checking off at the line of scrimmage. Drops back. He wants to throw. He's going deep. He's got a man, and it is incomplete. McCain put it on the money, and a tremendous effort from Felix Norman on third down and six, and that'll bring up a punting situation for the Mustangs. David Norman's been, Norman's been one of their uh, go-to guys over the last couple of games. Just almost caught the football. Uh, Kendall, another another deep bit defensive back over there making the play. Had pretty good coverage, but he almost came up with a grab there. And five goes deep for the Hounds. Kendall lines up at the 26-yard line. Great snap. And a lazy high kick that hits at the 38, gets a Newport bounce up across the 40 to the 41-yard line. So that's where the Hounds will set up shop right there. They're on 41, their best starting field position of this first quarter. White River Ambulance and Paramedic has two locations to serve you, West Main and North Pecan Street, Newport. Write down their phone number. It's 523-3908. Dwayne Kirker is owner and operator of White River Ambulance and Paramedic. 41-yard line for the Hounds with 141 to play in the first. 14-3 to three in favor of the Hounds. Split receiver this time, Mosby to the right. Sean Ellis is the fullback, and he gets the call across the 45 to the 46-yard line. A gain of six for Sean Ellis. We talked about it the last couple of weeks, and especially last week. What happens when you get somebody going outside and breaking long runs? It makes your defensive ends. It makes your defensive tackles. It makes your linebackers and your cornerbacks spread the field, and it leaves it wide open for the man inside, and the man inside is number six, Sean Ellis. Exactly right, David. Now they may start keying on the middle a little bit, and that'll break the outside open again. High formation. Brand in motion. Goes to Little Ellis across the 45. Not a lot of running room. Gains one up to about the 47-yard line. The line of scrimmage was the 46. We're under a minute to play here in the third with the score 14-3. to 
They're exactly right. Again, a big series. If we can get it 21 to three, it's going to be very, very difficult for Four C to come back. I would think so. Big play right here, and I wouldn't be surprised to go upstairs. Third down and four. Ball at the 47. You must get the football in the Mustang territory, just over the 49 for first down. Slot man to the left. Split receiver to the left. I formation once again. This is Brand in motion. Pop pass to the tight end, Dean Holt, and Zach threw it just a little bit hard. He had Holt open for the first down, but that's going to bring up a punting situation for this Newport Graham football team. David, again, a pretty good call by Coach Keppel there. Thought we might go upstairs just a little bit taller. Uh, Holt was wide open. If the ball would have been a little bit lower, it could have been a very big play. We're going to punt the ball. Looks like Josh Busby in to punt. No, we're going to go for it. I think we're going to run the offside play, and then we're going to punt it. I sure think it'll be the offside play right here. Really don't expect us to go for it right here with this field position. Let's see if we line up and see if we do go for it. We're in motion. We try to get them to jump offside, and we do it. That is incredible. Everybody in the house except the defensive right tackle for four City knew we were going to run the offsides play. Everybody. Everybody, Dave. We sure knew it right here. There was no, no doubt about it. I mean, we've seen it so many times. They call a legal motion against the Greyhounds. Everybody knew it except the defensive tackle and the offensive lineman for the Greyhounds that jumped. Exactly. I saw a couple of defensive linemen move there. Surely thought it was going to be against Forest City, but apparently just a little bit of movement by one of the linemen. We're going to punt the ball now. Punt return team coming on for Forest City. Punting team coming on for the Greyhounds. Galat, number six, is a threat to go anytime he touches the football. He's the kid that we talked about early in this quarter. Busby to punt, Skelton to snap. Busby standing at his own 41. Must have good coverage. Kicks it away from Galat at the 28. A little hanky-panky reverse, fake reverse. Got a little running room at the 30. Across the 35 and nailed at the 37-yard line by Sean Ellis. Sean Ellis with a big hit. A little dipsy-doodle, fake reverse. On the return, Premier Video is your Jackson County Entertainment Headquarters. For all your video rentals, come to Premier Video. Boy, they've got a beautiful new building going up there on Malcolm Avenue right there on the curb. It ought to be open before you know it. Remember, you can buy movie cards, which make fantastic gifts at Premier Video. They're still located at Pratt Square. Well, Dave, my kids, we go by there every day, and they look check on the status of that Premier Video building. They're really excited about going in there and checking out some videos. I tell you, we'll be there the first day it's open. Split receiver wide to the right. One-on-one -on -one coverage over there by Gillespie. McCain wants to throw. He's got Norman open in a great catch by the split receiver Norman. He was the kid that dropped the long pass that McCain had put on the money a while ago. Norman looks like a big time receiver. And that's the end of a quarter. And the Hounds lead at 14 to three. Randy, your assessment of the first quarter. David, again, kind of like the Jonesboro game, huge plays by our offense. Little Ellis on two huge runs. He's got over 140 yards rushing so far. Defense has played pretty well, bent but not broken, and uh, just you know, really a good start for the Greyhounds. Hopefully, we can keep it up, get some more big plays offensively, and then stop them on defense and be off to a good start here. David, while we got a little time right here, I'd like to thank all the, the fans who have commented about last week's game to us over the week around Newport. People really showed a lot of concern about us being in the press box, and, and we really weren't under any physical harm or anything over there, but it's just a typical, typical game over there at Osceola. I really did too, Randy. I had a lot of people say something to me this week, and the only person that was any more concerned than those people that were concerned was me. I was real concerned. Exactly right. We were just wanting to get out of there. We've been through that before, but we just wanted to get out of there, and everything turned out all right. Had a fantastic trip home. Well, you can do that when you beat Osceola 28-21. George Kell Motors, Highway 367 North of Newport. If you're thinking about buying a new automobile, let me tell you about a great way to do it. It's called a smart buy. Go in and visit with Bob Bradley, Tommy Montgomery, or Rex Wilmans. Ask them how you can save $100 on an automobile and finance it for only three years as opposed to five years. It's called a smart buy at George Kell Motors. And Galen Farmer will fix up your paperwork, take care of your insurance and anything else that you need. Second down and a short three, full back up the middle, has the first down, breaks the tackle at the 48 and struggles to try to get to near midfield. 
David, again, I had him locked up for a little bit right there, but just not able to get him. I got a first down on the play. Looked like number 56, Andy Simpson on the play, I think. Andy Simpson's been in there some for Rob Tucker the last few plays. Newport Federal Savings and ba Savings Bank, two locations to help serve you. A full-service bank with a convenient drive-thru. If you're doing business with Newport Federal, ask them about their 8% loans on automobiles. Split receiver to the bottom of your screen, out of the screen now. Power play left side. Hit at the line of scrimmage, fighting for yardage. The second man threw across the 50 to the 49, a short gain for Forest City. David, excellent penetration by Rob Tucker back in the game right there. Kind of disrupted that play and, and just uh, took off their timing, only able to get about two yards on the play. Good job by Rob. Rob Tucker reminds me so much of a kid that played football with, with me back in the early 70s, Tyson Watkins dad Terrell not a big guy just a real quick guy and he just totally disrupts the offensive backfield second down and eight 14 to three in favor of Newport we just started the second quarter of an action a dead ball foul now on Newport for lining up off sides Again, disappointing penalty right there. Coach Lewis on the field asking about the call, but it's just one of those kind of mistakes you just simply can't afford to have. The U.S. Pizza Company in Newport is proud to be a sponsor for Greyhound football and all area athletic teams. For many years, the U.S. Pizza Company has been voted the best pizza in Northeast Arkansas. Make U.S. Pizza Company part of any weekend. And go on air and tell Mr. Jack that you heard it right here on cable 15. Split receiver, receiver left side, unbalanced line to the left. Quarterback sneak. Good for a gain of a couple. It's gonna be short of the first down. I'm not so sure that the Newport defensive line made the adjustments over that time. And thus the quarterback sneak to the right side where Newport's defense was a little outmanned. Third down in inches. Unbalanced line again. This time they go left side of the fullback. He's going to go score unless Holt will catch him. And Holt will catch him about the 15 to the 14 yard line. Just a quick hitter up inside by their big fullback. Barden, and he carries the distance down to the 14. First down and 10 for City. Four City scored 45 points last week against Mariana, scored zero against Wynn, the first football game of the year, but ran it up and down the field between the 20s all night long. David, 26 yards on the carry by the fullback, real typical of a good wishbone team to have that good fullback to be able to bust through like that. First down and 10, McCain drops back. He wants to throw into the end zone, complete for a touchdown as Gillespie falls down. So it's a 13-yard strike from McCain to Norman with 9.53 to play in the second. David, a wishbone team you know, can do that to you. You get so used to that run, running the triple option, things like that, and then they just raise up and throw it, and they get it, got a receiver that can really go for the football like that, a good play by the, by the receiver right there to get on that football. Four City's going to go for one here. Norman, their outstanding super do-it-all athlete, will be doing the kicking here on the extra point. It's 14 to nine, a chance to cut the lead to four. And it is up, and it is good. Well, David, a high kick. We had a guy in there coming in from the right side, almost got in there to block it, but just a, a real good kick, obviously a real strong leg by the kicker right there. Like Kendall probably laying out trying to get the block there. Four City has shown they can move the football. They drive it from their 38 of 62 yard drive. Still not with the lead, the Hounds scoring first, leading seven to nothing, then it was seven to three, then it was 14 to seven, now it's 14 to 10. 
David, we talk so much, much about momentum in football games. This is really going to be a big series by Newport here. We're getting uh, got midway through the second quarter here. We need to get that momentum before halftime uh, arrives. I need to get some get a drive here or a big play. Either one, we'll take it either way. Harris Hospital located at 1205 McLean Street in Newport. Expert health care close to home. Quality professional people at the Harris Hospital. Millions of dollars worth of diagnostic equipment and facility updates. Preparing for their 50th anniversary this coming year. And this kick is going to go out of the end zone. And the Hounds will start at their own 20-yard line. David, all Robert Kendall could do right there was watch it. I mean, he knew all the way that it was going in the end zone. And, of course, when the kickoff goes into the end zone in high school football, there is no return. It's automatically dead once it crosses that goal line. So no chance for a return right there. No need to drive the football here. If you're looking for a great gift idea for Christmas, let me recommend Newport Electronics, your Radio Shack dealer in Newport. They have the neatest little electronic toys out there that I'll promise you will make your kids, regardless of their age, from 6 to 66 or 8 to 88. They're fantastic at Newport Electronics. Tell them we sent you out there. Hand off to Little Ellis. Not much running room as he tries to run the right side. He'll pick up one yard. Officially, we'll give him one. Go to Newport Electronics and check out all their electronic toys. I'm talking about these, you know, nice cars and boats and airplanes that are remote controlled. I mean, that man, they're great. I think you think that 40-year-old kids really like those toys quite a bit. The way they're talking, David. I know this 40-year-old kid does. I formation with Brandon motion to the left side. Harris option play left. Got a little room at the 25. Nailed about the 27-yard line. And Zach quickly up off his feet. Great hit by the strong safety that time for Forest City. This is going to be a whale of a football game, and we knew that it would, would be coming in. David, tough job by Zach. He really got stuck right there, but he was the first one up. He's a tough kid and did a good job right there. Got us about six yards. We got a chance to get a first down here. Third down and three. The drive started at the 20. Kendall goes wide right. Will the Hounds put it in the air? Harris drops back. Looks like he wants to throw. He's got Kendall on. What a pass by Harris to Kendall. Kendall breaks a tackle at the 35 across the 40 and tripped up as Robert Kendall looked as though he might go the distance. David, I thought he was really going to go all the way. Good job by Kendall. Just tripped up there. Looks like looked like he was going to go all the way, but still a good game. Got the first down, kept the drive alive. Three things happened on that play. Great protection from the offensive line. Zach Harris sprinting to his right. Had to backtrack a little bit. Was very, very patient. Kendall was open. He was open all the way. Threw the ball to Kendall. And the, the other great thing was Kendall making the great move. First down and 10. The Hounds have the football at the 42-yard line. Mosby, split receiver out of your screen at the bottom here on the left-hand side. Harris, fake to Ellis. He wants to throw. He's got Mosby, and he overthrows Mosby about the 25-yard line. Zach going for the big change. Your complete auto headquarters for new or used or program vehicles is located at 520 Malcolm Avenue in Newport, Lakeside Chevrolet Buick. Geo stands ready to help you with your next auto purchase. Service after the sale peeps, keeps people coming back year after year after year. Lakeside Chevrolet Buick, Geo, Malcolm Avenue in Newport. Their number is 523-3672. David, a good job of mixing the plays up right there, uh, throwing the bob on first down, but just excellent coverage by Four City, not really a chance. Second down and 10 from the 47 with eight minutes to play. It's 14 to 10 in favor of the Hounds. Inside to Sean Ellis across the 45, fighting for yardage to the 47-yard line. A pickup of five. And we'll give him six. Third down and a long four. Mustang lucky number, one, five, six. For a buffet for two at Whole Hounds Restaurant. David, a big play right here, third down, about five. It's just really critical we keep this drive alive. Really hard to tell what Coach Keppel's all would call right here, but expect something different. Kendall's in the ball game at the bottom of the screen. 
Brand in motion right. Give it to Little Ellis to the right side. He turns the corner at the 50 and stuck at the 45-yard line, but Little Chris is up again, and that's that big, strong safety once again. And look at him prance across the way in front of the big Newport crowd. But who's got the first down on that? I thought it would be a, maybe a surprising play, but that wasn't surprising at all, just tossing it to Little Ellis, using that speed to get outside and first down Newport. That is Sampson Cunningham with his second big hit on this Newport drive, but the second first down for the Hound Dogs. Drive started at their own 20. It's down inside Four City territory now at the 45-yard line. Mosby split to the bottom of the screen. Brand in the slot going right. Hand off to Sean Ellis, and Sean Ellis is tripped at the line of scrimmage, but he falls forward for a gain of about a yard, possibly two. Boy, David, I don't know if I've ever seen a defense hit as hard as this one has. They've made several just huge hits tonight, probably more big hits than I've ever seen in a high school football game by defense like that. Good speed and good hitting ability. 6.45 to play in the half. It's a four-point Newport lead, 14 to 10. I formation, brand in motion right. Sean Ellis, and boy, he is stuck after a gain of one. This Four City defense is putting on some hits. Just big hit after big hit on, on our players right there. Sean Ellis tried to break it inside, only got about one yard. Going to bring up about a third down and seven. Riverboat Real Estate, Malcolm Avenue. If you're thinking about selling your home or your property, call 523-4447. That's the number for Ed Cunningham, principal broker of Real Est Riverboat Real Estate. Boy, I'm getting excited. There's 5.55 to play here in the half. The Hounds lead it before, and we've got a football game on our hands. Mosby, bottom of the screen. Motion is brand to the right side. Harris wants to throw. Screen left side. Ellis is wide open. And he breaks the tackle at the 40, and they're going to call a clip against the Hounds as Ellis is going to come up short. That's Brad Davidson with the call, holding against Newport. Keep it in your pocket, Brad. <laughs> right, Dave, we kind of saw where he's going to throw it over there, knew it was coming, and sure did. Big penalty. We'll move the Hounds back. Penalty flag thrown at the 45-yard line. Ellis was a little short of the first down, but it had been fourth and short, and the Hounds could have gone for it there. Now it's going to be third and a ton. Uh, Dave, we had a chance to be in good position. We could have got that third and one. We had a real good chance of getting the first down. Now we'll probably have to go upstairs right here and, and hope for a big play and get this first down and keep the drive alive. Ten-yard penalty on the play. Going to bring up third down and about 20. Big illegal use of the hands against the Newport. Offensive line coming out on the swing pass. Kendall goes wide to the right. He's the big playmaker on third and long. And Kendall jumps off sides across the way, and we were going to run a halfback pass. Robert's got a headache across the way. David, Robert knew the play was coming. He was wanting to get a fast start right there and just got a, got a quick jump off there, no doubt about the flag. Going to bring up about third down and about 25 yards to go. A long way. I don't know what you call on third and 25. I have no idea. It could be a surprise right here. We may just try to get the ball to Little Ellis and hope he get a break and, you know, get a big play. It's kind of like Osceola with Jonathan Adams. You try to get the ball in your in your big man's hands and just hope something good happens. Expect either uh, Kendall or Ellis to touch the ball on this play. Quarterback sneak. <laughs> Kendall is wide to the right. I bet he draws double coverage over there. Harris, quick pitch back to Little Chris. Double coverage against Kendall, and there's a penalty flag, and I think Newport's going to get a break. I think the ball was overthrown. I don't think Kendall had a chance to catch it, and I think Newport's going to come up with a big break here. David, if they call it that way, it'll certainly be a big break. I mean, we'll certainly take it, but I, I don't know about that call. It seemed like Kendall just got kind of tripped up right there, but there wasn't anything uh, purposeful or flagrant right there, just one of those things where he got tripped up. Incidental contact. Incidental contact plus... I don't think the ball would have been caught had there been no contact at all. Exactly. Incidental contact were the words I was trying to think of right there, and that's exactly what it was, but we'll certainly take it. Those things kind of usually equalize out, so we'll take it now. 
It's been an array of penalties the last three plays. And we'll move it back up here to about the 45-yard line and try it again on third down and nine. We were going to run the halfback past the play before. And Kendall was in motion. 5-19 to play in the half, 14-10, and I see lightning back to the west. The west is the direction we don't want to see it in. That means it's coming this way. We thought maybe we'd get through this game without it, and hopefully we still can, but it's uh, looking a little more ominous now. And we have absolutely no protection whatsoever. We'll do whatever we have to do to get off the top of this press box. <laughs> exactly right. First down and 10 after the penalty, so an automatic first down for the Hounds. Zach Harris, right side, pitch to Little Ellis. Little Ellis tries to get across the line of scrimmage, does so right now, tripped up after a gain of a couple. Zach with a good job. Running option play right, short gain on the play. Two-yard gain for the Hounds. Dave, this four city defense has done such a good job adjusting to Newport's offense and really a good tackling football team. Again, making the big hits and just, just wrapping up and making good tackles, but we still got the lead and got a good chance to go down and score, I think, right here. Second down and eight, ball on the 43-yard line. Harris from Hagwood. Little Ellis inside, he breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage and he was loose in the secondary momentarily, but he's tripped up after he gets close to the first down across the 35, near the 34 yard line, depending on the spot. It's gonna be close and I think they're gonna have to have a measurement. David, I think he's got the first down right there. Of course, last week I missed a couple of those that were I thought were pretty obvious and obvious, and obviously were, they weren't very obvious. But I think Chris got the first down right there. Thought the ball might was close to coming loose there at the end, but he held on, and I believe we're going to have a first down right here. The chains are being stretched. Looks like it's going to be first down Newport. Always find something super special at Dairy Queen, 2000 Malcolm Avenue in Newport. Doc Hawk and crew invite you by to enjoy superb sandwiches, their famous chicken strip basket, and their delicious yogurts and royal treats. Their current specials include chicken club sandwich at $2.49 and any regular size milkshake at $0.89 cents at the Dairy Queen in Newport. Kendall in the ball game, split receiver to the left. Pop pass to the tight end. Holt is complete. That time it's a little easier from Zach. And Dean near another first down. And across the 25 to the 23, and that will move the change. Great call by Bill Keppel. Right, uh, Dave, we tried to run that pass a while ago. It was just overthrown. Uh, Colt showing real good hands right there, and also some tough running after he was hit. He stretched out and got that first down. A good job, first down Newport. This drive started at the Newport 20-yard line after the kick into the end zone by Four City. Sean Ellis, a little running room inside, and now Big Ellis breaks a tackle at the 15. He's inside the five and down at about the three-yard line. Maybe all the way to the two. David, he's down to the one or two yard line. Tough running like you expect to see out of a fullback. Good job by Big Ellis. Sean Ellis showing his power. First down and goal for the Greyhounds. With 3.55 to play here in the half. Ball will be at the two yard line. First down and goal. Hounds lead it 14 to 10. About the one and a half. Sean Ellis dives. Did he get there? I don't think he did. He's right at the goal line. Right at the goal line. Unless they mark it the way the officials did last week on his fourth down. And, and then I'll move it back to the three. Hopefully not, David. I remember that referee last week just gradually moving on back, uh, about a yard back further on the line of scrimmage on one of those calls. Several questionable spots last week. But we won the football game, so who cares? Second down and goal from the one-yard line. Reardon goes wide left. Sean Ellis. Touchdown. 
Touchdown, maybe. Yes. They signal over here. Trey's got us with a score. Sean Ellis, one yard run with 2.50 to go. The Hounds answer the touchdown for Forest City Drive in 80 yards for the score. David, big touchdown. We talked earlier about driving the football, getting those first downs. We had several first downs on that drive, and then we're able to drive the ball the length of the field practically and get that big touchdown, get some momentum back. Got a big penalty on that play. We'll certainly take that. Uh, we've got our extra point team in there, Scott Skelton to snap, Jason Cathy, and Chris Dillon. Hounds have taken a 10-point lead, 20 to 10. Low snap, Kathy runs left, he's got room. Can he get there with his feet? Yes! Jason Kathy, as we saw last week against Osceola, does the same here against Four City to extend the 10-point lead to 12. They'll tell you what happened right there. Jason Kathy saw the outside man there coming in, knew he had a good chance to block it. The outside man of uh, Four City really had a good jump there. I thought he may be outside, had a good chance to block that. Jason saw that, just took off and just like last week used that speed and just got in the end zone. Good job Jason Cathy. James Morehart of New York Life Insurance and Securities is located in the professional building in downtown Newport. James handles most life insurance policies and can help you develop an investment plan. Give James a call at 523-5553 or go see him in the professional building in downtown Newport. Brands Body Shop for small pings to dings to a complete rebuilding job. Let me recommend Brand Body Shop in Newport with decades of quality service and satisfied customers. Let Brand Body Shop take care of your next auto body glass repair or auto body repair. David Chris Dillon fixing the kickoff right here. Again, a big series by our defense. Only 250 remaining in the half. If we can stop them here, we will have the momentum. If they go down and score, they'll have the momentum. So a big series right here. We want to keep that mo going into the halftime. 22 to 10 in favor of the Hounds. Dillon's kick will be fielded at the 17 across the 20 to the 25 to the 30. Gets a little running room to the outside at the 40. To the 50 is Gallette. He's down inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line. And that's the 145-pound sophomore we talked about early in the ball game who has tremendous breakaway speed. Great return. Forty six yards. Two thirty nine and the clock will not start till the ball is snapped, but four city with a chance to get right back in this football game. Unbalanced line to the right side. Reverse to Gallette. Boy, he is smacked by Kenyon Miller at the 25-yard line, and I heard that one from up here. Short gain on the play. David, we've called Kenyon Miller's name several times tonight, and he made one of those hits like Four City's been making several times tonight. A big hit, big play, and really excited. Kenyon, good job. Big series by our defense right here. Gain of three, second down and seven, ball on the 25-yard line. McCain to the fullback inside for a gain of a couple. Down to about the 23-yard line. David, good penetration by Joey Miller right there. We've talked about him and Rob Tucker several times over the last few weeks. Just excellent penetration getting there, disrupting that play. and really makes it hard for the play develop, for, to develop for the offense. Split receiver, Norman. We'll go wide to the top of the, your screen to the left. Quick pitch to the right side. Good job. And drag down from behind by the big eye, Darren Ingram. <coughs> and Darren's going to showboat a little bit. Boy, that's a big play there, Randy. I mean, a big play. That's going to bring up fourth down for Forest City. Fourth down and long. They're a big-time play by Darren Ingram. Darren's a college prospect, about 240 pounds. Just a big play right there and got the defense fired up. Big play, fourth down and about eight. And look for McCain to go to 15, Normant. Exactly. I think everybody will be expecting that right here. He's a big-time receiver, made a good catch or two already tonight. Forest City breaks the bone with two slot backs, split receiver to the right. Going across the middle to Norman, and it's in and out of his hands, and Newport's defense has held with a minute six to play here in the first half. 
Once again, we've talked about the last couple of weeks. We've bent some, but not broken on defense on several big drives. I mean, we've allowed some points, but on some of the really big key drives, we've, we've bowed up and stopped the other team. But wouldn't it be great if little Ellis could break one right here? That would really be excellent going into halftime. Boy, if you're coach for Four City, you wonder, you get the ball on your on the Newport 28-yard line with two and a half minutes to play, only 28 yards from pay dirt, trailing by 12. You've got to score. You've got to punch it in. Newport's offense will set up shop at the 25. Zach Harris inside to Sean Ellis. Not a lot of room there. Gain of one. One minute under a minute to play. And boy, the lightning back to the west is getting closer. I'm glad I'm keeping stats real closely because I hadn't seen it yet. So I'm glad I hadn't seen it yet because I'd be getting a little bit concerned right now. Hopefully it'll hold off for another hour, hour and a half. For all your farm loans, visit with Union Planners Bank of Northeast Arkansas and Hank Pierce, member FDIC. Their phone number is 523-7500. David Kendall's back on the field. He wasn't in there for the last play, so you kind of wonder if we might try something right here with only about 25 seconds remaining. We might try to go big here. I say we hand it off and go in with a 12-point lead. Little Ellis. Across the 25, fumbled the football, and Four City's got it with 13.8 seconds to go here in the half, and the clock will not start until Four City snaps the football. Boy, that's not what you needed. Maybe we should have thrown it to Kendall. Should have thrown it to Kendall, like I said right there, David, but you didn't expect the fumble. But the big play right here, probably two plays for Forest City right here. It's very important that you really watch that wide receiver. You expect him to go to him, and uh, really have to get up and, and get up in his face and, uh, and make some big, big defensive plays right here. Timeout. Not enough players on the field. Hounds are going to be a guy short, is that correct? No, there were 11 on the field, but uh, I think Tyson Watkins was really concerned. Apparently he thought somebody wasn't out there, the wrong person was out there or something, but there were 11 on the field. Very smart play. When in doubt, and you have a timeout, call the timeout. Arkansas State University, BB Newport, located on Victory Boulevard, is a great place to start your college education. ASU BB Newport. Offers a wide variety of programs. You know, it's never too late to start your college education. It's so great, Randy, to have a, it's a college. We have a college in Newport. And if you're thinking about, you know, furthering your education, it is truly the place to start. Dave, that's exact. The great quote for that is, it's a great place to start. You can stay home if you need to and, and work and stay home and maybe save a little money right there and get those first couple of years under your belt and get off to a good start. A college education just so important in today's work world uh, to really have that, and we're just lucky as we can be to have that in Newport. Night classes available, and ASU offers free adult education classes year-round. Four City, first down and 10. At the 24-yard line, McCain wants to pass. He's got Norman open in the end zone. Now double coverage, and what a play coming over by Robert Kendall. Gillespie had him one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm sure James knew that Kendall was coming for the double coverage. I'm sure he did, right? Expected it all the way. Great job by Kendall doing what a safety needs to do, getting over there and making the play. Just a good job by Robert Kendall. He makes big play after big play. 8.1 seconds remaining here in the half. It's 22 to 10 in favor of the Greyhounds. McCain up under center. Pass across the middle is complete inside the five and scramble to the end zone. Touchdown for City. And now a penalty flag is going to be called for a late hit against the Greyhounds. Turnover hurt. David, we've talked so much about momentum going into halftime. We really were in good shape and had the fumble and then the big play, the big pass play right there. Just really, hopefully not too demoralizing, but it certainly gives Forest City the momentum going into half. It's 22 to 16 right now with eight tenths of a second remaining. Uh, expect Forest City to go for one right here. Personal foul, the call on that, that'll be assessed on the, on the kickoff, of course. 
Just a swing pattern coming out of the backfield was Cunningham, and McCain put the ball on the money. Cunningham broke a tackle about the 10, one again at the 5, and broke both of those tackles in the end zone, and one of them is going to cost Newport 15 yards, but only eight-tenths of a second remaining here in the half. And that's a big comeback play, the turnover haunting the Greyhounds here. Right, David, just really hurts going into the half right here. Hopefully we can uh, get in the half and get back, get our spirits back and be back in this ball game. But Fort City's going to receive the second half kickoff, and it'll be very critical for us to stop them right there because if they could drive that one in there, they'd take the lead and, lead and certainly have the momentum. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Hounds do lead here, and they will lead at the half. It's just a matter of by how many. Four City to go for two, trailing by six. Power play, left side. And he's in, Cunningham with a two-point conversion. I saw that lightning. I saw it for the first time, and again, it's back in the west, but hopefully it's way back there. Kickoff coming up right here. You certainly expect Forest State just kick this ball on the ground. They certainly don't want Chris Ellis or Robert Kendall to get the ball, but I'd love it if they get the ball down to Ellis or Kendall. That'd give us a chance to, to get a big play, but really expect just a short squib kick right here and for the half to run out. And I'm not so sure that we might not might not need to make some adjustments ourselves at halftime. Just sitting up here close to the lightning, and hopefully it will hold off. But that would give us a little time to make some adjustments because if it starts raining in the middle of the third quarter, we're in trouble. Exactly right, David. Uh, if it does it in the middle of the third quarter, I'd say some fans are going to miss some of the replay tomorrow, especially if it's lightning. Modern Woodman of America, located at 106 South State Street in Newport. Brenda Williams and Larry Jordan, your district manager. For all types of life insurance needs, visit with Brenda Williams and Larry Jordan at Modern Woodman of America. Their phone number is 523-9178, 22 to 18. Newport has never trailed in the football game. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I can promise you my heart's in this game, but the better part of my heart's in that lightning. Exactly right, David. Mine, too. Hopefully it'll hold off for a while. Why don't you go ahead and kick the ball deep right here? I don't think they will, and they don't. Well, we'll get one play out of this at least. Penalty flag as the ball goes out of bounds at the, or near the 40 yard line with three tenths of a second to play in the first half. It's 22 to 18 in favor of the Hounds. I think right here what you would do is sit on it. Snap the football, go down to a knee, go in to the halftime with a guaranteed lead. That's kind of what I expect, David, but Kendall is out there. He's going to be split right, so uh, you just never know what you might see right here, but I really expect us just to go down, to, go down on one knee, go into the half with a four-point lead and, and get, make some adjustments and come back fired up and, and get back and win this football game. Brad Davidson hollering to the folks below us in the press box to reset the clock has to be reset to 0 .8. 0 .8. set it back to 0 0.8. It was never touched on the kickoff, so it should, should have stayed at point eight. Really makes no difference. I don't yeah, think we'll run a play in less than half of a second. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think the hounds will just fall on it here. Smart thing to do. We've played a half. At Four City here on Cable 15, and it's the Newport Greyhounds 22, and the Four City Mustangs 18. As promised, second half action about to get underway, and Randy Klepeczka, Four City has a quality football team. It's exactly right, David. They've got the tough wishbone offense that you know can grind out yards. They've got the built-in pass ball. They've got a couple of guys that can catch it real well. They've got probably the hardest hitting defensive football team we've seen in a while in high school. But still, the big play of the first half, uh, the fumble there, and then the, then the big pass play. I thought we was going to get the tackle on that big pass play, but he got in there and scored and just really turned the momentum. We've got 
to come back here in the second half, try to seize that momentum. Uh, the Fort City's going to receive the football, so it's just critical that we come out and stop them. If we can do that and we can drive down and score, we'll be back in good shape. But we've got to do that. You know, the Hounds have never trailed in the football game, and they lead it here at the half by the score of 22-18. to 18. Four City, as you mentioned, Randy, has some momentum coming back out into the second half, having driven the football the 25 yards there to end the half and scoring with only eight-tenths of a second on the clock. So important on this opening possession that the defense plays well. Get the football back in, in pretty good field position for the Hounds. You know, the Hounds have had very poor starting field position. Their first uh, first two possessions started at their own 19, their own 18, and Ellis got the two long runs. Then they start at the 41, and we really don't capitalize on the great field position. Then we start at our own 20, drive at 80 yards, capped off by the one-yard touchdown run by Sean Ellis. And at 22 to 10 at that time, I felt pretty comfortable. And then I really felt comfortable after the next kickoff. And Four City started at the Newport 28-yard line and gave it up on downs. Newport had a chance with a couple of two and a half minutes to go to, you know, gain a couple of first downs and put the football on the ground, which has been uh, a pain to take here at the halftime. Exactly right, Dave. In fact, you know, before we fumbled that football there, I made the comment that we may go deep. And, uh, you know, a lot of people thought that may have been a risky call, but it looks like it may have been the call to make right there. But who knows? It's one of those things. We hadn't fumbled the ball the whole whole ball game. But it's one of those things, a kind of an extra effort fumble right there. And Forest City made the big play to get back in it. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're going to have to kick off right here, and our defense is going to have to step up and make some big plays. We've got Chris Dillon coming out to tee the ball up. And, Hopefully our kick team can get some good coverage. Uh, Four City's gotten a good return or two. They've got excellent speed, seem like good special teams. So we've really just got to make some big plays here, no question about it. We have 24 minutes of football to play. We appreciate all the loyal viewers and listeners here on Cable 15. I'm David Black with Randy Klopetschka to call the second half. Newport will kick off. Weather we talked about just a few moments ago has been threatening. We hope that the weather holds off, lightning back to the west and northwest. David, you made the comment about the cumulonimbus clouds. We were talking about that all the way over here. Hopefully they're going to slide a little bit north of us. Seemed like before I left home at about 4 o'clock, most of the activity was kind of tending to go towards the northeast. So if it does that, maybe it'll slide north of us. We'll miss it. We really need it to miss it. Miss us here in the second half. Chris Dillon to kick off. Yeah, because if we miss part of the replay or we don't get it filmed, it's because it hits us. We're on top of the press box. Dillon to kick, and it's a good one. This is their sophomore speedster at the 10. Running room across the 30. Down to about the 33-yard line on the opening possession for the Mustangs. David, uh, number 16 was in on the play right there. Ken Black, Jr., again, making a big play on the kickoff like he did last week. Way to go, Ken Black. Come on, defense. 22 to 18 is our score. Thanks for joining us here on Cable 15. You can listen to the broadcast each and every Friday night with the voice of the Greyhounds and Paul Duggar on KLLN Radio. 90.9 FM. Quarterback pitch left. Option was played well, but Forest City has got some running room across the 40. Still running across the 45 and down to about the 46-yard line. First down and 10 for Forest City. Second, third, and fourth effort by the Four City running back. That's Curtis Cunningham, and Cunningham with a big gain, showing a lot of determination. And great field position after the first down at the 47. Still in Four City territory. McCain is the quarterback. We talked about the big splits in the line. Fullback inside, breaks a tackle, and he may go rumble. Caught from behind at the 35-yard line. Four City showing some power here to start the second half. Dave, we talked about the momentum. It's obvious Four City's got it. Just running extremely physically tough football right there. And uh, we've got to get up and make some penetration and, and try to bust this offense up. Doing, doing a good job of moving the football. Football team that had 
a tough time scoring against Wynn. They were shut out. They have 18 in the first half against Newport. We're in second half action. Some confusion on the field, and we're going to get a penalty for too many men on the field. Now they're just going to call offsides because we had 11 on the field. We had a man trying to get off. And that's better than the 15-yard penalty for illegal participation. This could be only the five-yard penalty, and that'd be a big break for the Hounds. Big, uh, David. We thought we'd get to 15-yard right there. Of course, five is much better. It gives your defense another 10 yards to work with. We've really got to step up right here and make some big plays. Referee marking the ball off, marking and calling it offsides against Newport. Five yards instead of 15. First down and five, ball inside the 30-yard line. We'll call it officially at the 30, first and five. 11-10 to play, just underway, second half. Four City on the move. This drive started at their own 33. Quarterback, option, left side. Gain of about three, possibly four by McCain. Baltz Equipment Company and Tuckerman is your New Holland dealer. See Joe Trotter or Galen Gardner for all your Ford New Holland tractors, combines, great service department, parts department to take care of you. They're located on Highway 67 in Tuckerman. Second down and two. Ball at the 26-yard line in Newport Territory. Power play, third man through, across the 25, near a first down. He's got to go between the 25 and 24. It's going to be close, depending on the spot. David, again, the penalty of big play. Our defense has risen to the occasion here on two plays, allowed about five yards or slightly less, but the penalty gave him the first and five and uh, just two, two short of yards to carry. Dean Holt making a good play right there, but uh, you know they're coming into major, and if they get the first down, they'll maintain that momentum. Triple crunch chicken strip sandwich plus potato wedges for $2.99. That's three white meat strips on a pepperidge farm bun with special sauce and potato wedges. Only $2.99 at KFC, and you see the first down right there for the Mustang. Kentucky Fried Chicken, 2200 Malcolm Newport, 5236323. Big clearance sale going on right now at Joe Taylor Ford, Joe Taylor Chrysler. Great deals on their year end closeout of 96 models. Split receiver. Norman is at the top of the screen on the right. Full house, wishbone backfield, ball at the 24 yard line. Quarterback, option right, cuts back against the grain. He's tripped up as he crosses the 20. To the 19 yard line. With 9.45 remaining here in the third quarter, and the Hounds still leading the ball game by four, 22 to 18. They have never trailed. David, just a typical wishbone drive controlling the football right here. Andy Simpson made the previous play. Second down and five. Full back up the miss, middle for short yardage. Still a good play as he gets about two and a half. It's going to be third down and three. We talked about how momentum would play a factor in the ball game and knew that Newport had to kick off to Four City to start the third quarter. Exactly right, Dave. Let me give credit for Joey Miller and Kenyon Miller on that last play. A big play. We've shown the ability to, to kind of you know bend but not break in these situations. We need to do that here. Third down and three. Ball at the 17, quarterback. First down yardage, down to about the 10. McCain running the option to perfection. That's true triple option football, faking the football to the fullback inside, taking what the defense gives you. Ball's going to be short, uh, spotted just short of the 10-yard line, so it'll be first down and 10. Four City can get a first down, but it'll be about the three-inch line. Split receiver to the left. 
McCain looks over the Newport defense. Power play left side. Almost tripped up in the backfield, but Rob Tucker is going to be in the backfield to play havoc on that play. Tripped up the running back. The Newport defense pursuit recovers after a gain of about two. Second down and eight. The Mustangs on the eight-yard line, second down and eight. Can get a first down about the three. Quick pitch left side, running room at the five. Defense in for the hit at about the four-yard line. That'll bring up another third down play. Four City trying to take the lead for the first time in a football game with 740 to play in the third quarter. Our family serving your family is the motto of Jackson's Funeral Home in Newport. They're located at 1910 Malcolm Avenue in Newport. Their number is 523-5822. Third down. Four City can get a first down about the three-inch line. Power backfield, quarterback left, hits, dives to about the one-yard line. He's going to be short of the first down. And it's going to be fourth down and inches for the first and fourth down and inches for the touch. Ball will be placed at the one-yard line. Fourth down and about two and a half feet to go for the first down. A yard to go for a touchdown. McCain up under. Tailback, touchdown. Four City opens the second half, driving it 67 yards. Scores with 634 to go and take the lead here in the third. A one yard run. by Sampson Cunningham. David, we talked, we've talked and talked. I'm sure everybody's tired of you know, hearing about momentum, but it's obviously in four seeds hands right now. But if our offense can come back and you know, make some big plays, we can, we can get right back in this ball game. Two point conversion pass to little brother Cunningham is good. And four city has turned the tide. And now the Newport Greyhounds trail by four. 26-22, David, the Forest City right here. 6-34 remaining in the third quarter. The, uh, the Forest City fans are on their feet. Uh, the Newport fans are trying to counteract that, trying to get up and get some momentum going on the other side. We still went right in the middle of this football game. It's very important that our offense makes some big plays here. Uh, we got number five and number nine deep, and those two guys can do it. So uh, you know, I think we can get right back in this football game. A battle on our hands here at Forest City, and glad you could join us. Third quarter of action is 26 to 22 in favor of Forest City. Forest City, the last two times they have had the football, one drive to start and end the second half, almost ended it, got within eight tenths. A 25-yard drive after a Newport fumble. And the two-point conversion got Four City to within four, and then opening the third quarter, Four City drives it 67 yards for the touchdown and takes their first lead of the night. That's exactly right, David. A, a good drive again, a wishbone-type football going down the field about 67 yards there, and just doing a good job breaking tackles again. They've shown really tough running ability and hard hitting on defense, but Greyhounds are coming back. See how the Hounds handle a little adversity on the road. Kendall and Ellis are both deep. Going to be fielded by the short man. Up to about the 22-yard line is Ken Black. And a good job of holding on to the football by the young sophomore. So the Hounds will start at their own 23-yard line with 6.28 to play here in the third quarter. See what the Hound offense can do on their first possession here in the second half. Come on, Hound Dogs. 
Oh, we're going to drive this football down and score, Randy. I think so, David. Hopefully a big play. Sean Ellis tripped up after a short game of about one. Clock continues to move with 6-10 to play in the third quarter. Gain of one by Sean Ellis up to the 24-yard line. Neighborhood Cleaners on Lindley Street in Newport is your new dry cleaning and laundry service. They're located or locally owned and operated by Benji Kimberly and Tyler Harris. Do business with the Neighborhood Cleaners. Split receiver is Kendall to the top of the screen, or out of the screen now. Try to throw to Kendall on just the quick hitch pattern. Overthrown. Newport looked to be a little confused on the play. All right, David. It's uh, you know situation where we really got to get our heads together, calm down. We're still right in the middle of this football game. Just settle down and run our offense and uh, and get a big play right here. We need a first down. Really importantly here, we need to at least get a few first downs if we're not going to score. Hopefully we score, but at least run that clock for a while and try to stave off this momentum. We knew coming in this Four City offense would be tough to stop. We knew that that Four City could stop themselves via the turnover. Brand in motion. Quick pitch to Little Ellis. Tries to break it outside, but cuts back up inside. Not a lot of room, lot of running room there across the 25 to the 26. So the Four City defense comes alive and will force the Newport Greyhounds to punt. David, we need a big punt right here. Good, good coverage. Uh, I'm hoping for a turnover. It's, we're due for a turnover on the other side. That would be huge if we could get one of those. But otherwise, just play some tough defense and stop them here. We have to stop them. Hounds to punt with 5.05 remaining here in the third quarter and trailing by four points. Busby lines up at his own 15. Good snap. And a good kick. A booming kick. Fielded at the 37. Great coverage. And down at about the 44-yard line in Four City territory. Hounds three and out on their first offensive possession. It's 26 to 22 in favor of Forest City. White River Ambulance and Paramedic has two locations to serve you, West Main and North Pecan and Newport. Dwayne Kirker is owner-operator, and White River Ambulance and Paramedic has a 24-hour-a-day paramedic-staffed ambulance service. Their phone number is 523-3908, White River Ambulance and Paramedic. Option left, football is on the ground. Can the Hounds get it? Yes, that may be the break that the Newport Greyhounds needed. We just talked about fumble, how critical it would be to get one that turns some momentum around. If our offense can go score, we'll have it back. Our fans are on their feet over there, hollering defense before that play, and now get our offense going, big play. 38 to play and Four City turns it over. We just talked about how good this Four City offense was against the Wynn Yellow Jackets opening night, gaining almost 400 yards and didn't get putting points on the board because of what you just saw there. Reardon in the upper left hand corner of your screen. Confusion on the field. I don't know really what's going on out there. I thought maybe some equipment trouble, but I don't really see any adjustments going on. But the referee has stopped play for just a second. Hound offensive ready to go. 28-yard line in Forest City territory. Brand in motion right. Option play. Right side, Harris. Short gain, if any, running the option play to the right side. Give him credit for one. Down to the 27-yard line. Premier video on their new location coming soon on Malcolm Avenue in the curve. Sharon Gardner, for all your video rentals, you can continue to use their location. McLean Street at Pratt Square. Brand motion. Little Ellis across the 25 and stacked up there as he reached the 25-yard line. Good power play for a gain of just about. Give him credit for two. 
looked to get more than what he really picked up. Right, David. Thought so. Third down, seven right here. Kendall is back in the game. You kind of look for the Newport to try to throw the football probably right here and uh, get some big yardage. Ball's resting on the 25-yard line. Newport got the turnover at the 28. Four City's defense is stiffening. Brand in motion. Harris drops. He wants to throw across the middle. He's got Kendall complete at the two-yard line. Zach Harris with the pass and Robert Kendall, the big gun, hero in last week's ball game with the big catch and the hounds are knocking on the door once again. Harris to Kendall, it wasn't one of Zach's prettiest passes, but the result was certainly there. 23 yards to Kendall again. Big play after big play by Kendall. He's your go-to guy in that situation. Great job. Let's go score and get that momentum. Ball will be placed at the three-yard line. First down and goal. I formation with a split receiver and slot man to the left. Brand motion right. Chris Ellis fights, dives, touchdown, Newport. The Greyhounds come storming back after the big turnover by the Four City Mustangs on a three-yard run by Chris Ellis. Huge play. We needed that fumble right there, and we got it, and we scored, and hopefully our defense can, can gain from that and, and really make some big plays here and stop them. 28-26, Newport. Chris Dillon in for the PAT. We've got a ball game on our hands. I believe you'd call this a barn burner. 28 to 26. And the extra point is going to be no good. So it'll be only a two-point Newport lead, but a lead is a lead is a lead. Exactly, David. We're just glad to be back in front right here. Uh, again, a big play right there, and we, we certainly needed that. If, if Fort City would have gone and scored, it would have been tough to come back from that. But we got the big play. We scored. We're in front, and that's where we want to be. Defense can step up. We'll stay there. So important that the Newport crowd got on their feet after the Four City fans did the same after their team went ahead across the way. The Newport fans encouraging our football team to hang in there and good things would happen and they did with the turnover. All right, David, our crowd was over there yelling defense, defense, defense for uh, right before that big big penalty, right? I mean big before the big turnover right there. They were getting into it before the big play occurred and certainly they're really fired up now and that's very important. If you're thinking about buying a new automobile, let me tell you how to do it the smart way, and it's called a smart buy at George Kell Motor Company in Newport, your Pontiac Cadillac Olds GMC truck dealer. See Rex Wilmans, Tommy Montgomery, or Bob Bradley. Dean Sides, George Kell, owners and operators. The man in charge out there is our cameraman, Galen Farmer. Galen's been there for uh, 35 years. 36 years, 35, 34. Here is the kick. Filled it at the 27. Across the 30 to about the 33. James Gillespie on the big hit for the Hounds. Four City's offense will set up shop right there. This is their third possession of the third quarter, the last time out. Four cities, McCain put it on the ground for the Hounds. 33-yard line as opposed to the 32. Option right. Quarterback got some room. Great recovery by Kenneth Tate. Kenyon Miller also in on the tackle for the Hounds. A gain of six. Second down and four. Four cities, McCain has run this option to perfection. Very few times has he tried to pitch. The one time he did was just a couple of plays ago, and they put it on the ground. All right, David, tough offense to master, but he's certainly done a good job right here. Second down, four. Quarterback, left side. Better defense by the Hounds, but McCain struggles up near the 45-yard line. Does have enough yardage for the first down. A little too much there. But Newport playing McCain a little better. 219 to play in the third quarter. It's 28 to 26 in favor of the Greyhounds. The Greyhounds trying to go 3-0 on the year. 
having defeated the Jonesboro Hurricane and the Osceola Seminoles, and who would have thought it? Battling 4A powerhouse Forest City. McCain with the quarterback sneak, breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage, across the 40 to the 35 to the 30, and he's run down from behind at the 27-yard line just on a quarterback sneak. David, uh, just right through there, just busted right through. We had to run him down from behind. Felt like we had the speed to stop him, but uh, again, a big play just on a quarterback sneak. Newport Federal Savings Bank, a full-service bank with a drive through window. Free checking, absolutely free checking. Visit with Brad Snyder and his crew today. Two locations to serve you, downtown Newport and Olivia Drive. Their number's 523-3611. McCain up under center, ball on the 27-yard line. Cross buck series, good running room, 4-4 city, down near the 22-yard line. We'll give him credit for six, second down and four. Pick up about six and second down and four. Drive really started on the 28. Down to the 22-yard line. Split receiver to the left, wishbone backfield. And Newport's going to line up all sides. That'll give Four City a first down about the 17-yard line. Boy, David, once again, the kind of penalty you just simply cannot afford to have. Boy, I tell you what, that's a tough call right there. It's going to give uh, Four City a first down, it appears, or at least real close to it. We'll give them a first down and 10 yards to go at about the 17-yard line. Just the kind of thing you can't afford to do. First down for the Mustangs, the U.S. Pizza Company. And Newport is proud to be a sponsor for Greyhound football and all area athletic teams for many years. Voted Arkansas's best for pizza, great salads, and a large selection of delicious sandwiches. Try the U.S. Pizza Company. First down and 10 at the 17-yard line. McCain up under center. Wants to come right side. He does. Cuts back against the grain. He's inside the five-yard line down to about the four. Four City has come roaring back. Mark him down at the five. You see the ball resting there. This may be who ha has the football last. It looks that way, Dave McCain, just doing a great job of running the option. Again, like I mentioned before, a tough offense, a master, but it looks like he's just getting better and better at it. Obviously, getting some good coaching on the triple option. First down and goal at the five. Newport leads it 28 to 26. Option right, McCain, touchdown. Oh, like we talked about McCain, he's really taking charge right now, just, just running the option to perfection, a great job, and just a big lane to turn into right there. No way we're going to stop him there. Makes the score 32 to 28 for City. Up by four, and I thought maybe the... They'd go for two, but no, unless it's a fake. They have 15 seconds, 14, 13 on the 25-second clock. Normant to do the kicking. 32 to 28 in favor of Forest City. Here's the kick, and it's good. Makes the score 33 to 28 for City, like David said, last maybe the last team to get the ball to win this football game. On the way down here, all five of us were making some predictions on how this game might turn out, and nobody predicted this high of a score in a game, but the offenses have really taken charge here, and hopefully the Greyhounds can do their part right here on this drive. Big series once again going into the fourth quarter. We only got 28.2 seconds remaining to go in the third quarter. Hounds had the lead as we started this quarter. By the score of 22 to 18, and then four sitting, scored on a one yard run. Made it 26 to 22, Newport comes back. Three yard Chris Ellis run, made it 28 26. And now four city regains the lead, 38 to 28. Hey, the 
this is what it's all about. It's exciting in Forest City, Arkansas. Come on, Greyhounds. Kendall at the 12, straight up the middle. Kendall across the 30, Kendall to the 35 and down right there. Good return by Robert Kendall. Sean Ellis has got to carry the football on this drive. Not Chris, Sean. Right, David. We've got to establish something inside. That'll open up the outside and possibly the passing game as well. Good return right there by Kendall, hopefully giving us a, a good start on this drive. Ball at the 34. Defense just spreading the field, covering the field, trying to shut down Chris Ellis. Harris looks, he wants to throw, he's, oh, oh, in there. it's complete up at the 45 yard line, but they're gonna call holding against the Newport Greyhounds. <laughs> holding against the Hounds will negate the first down pass completion. Great strike from Zach Harris to Dean Holt will be nullified. Boy, Dave, another big penalty. We've had a few of those tonight. An excellent catch right there by Holt. We've been close to a first down, but the penalty negates that. And we're in the hole with about first and 20, and we're going to have to come out of that. Maybe first and 22 because they'll penalize us from the spot of the holding penalty. Back to the 23. The original line of scrimmage was the 34. So an 11-yard penalty, and I don't, th don't, don't know whether the Hounds will get a play off here before the third quarter comes to an end. Harris to Little Ellis. Little Ellis tries to break a tackle at the 25 across to the 26-yard line. The ball is down there, and that's going to be the end of the third quarter of action with the score, Forest City 33, Newport 28. Kendall or Chris, little Ellis, a little slow getting up. Randy, we've got a quarter to play. One quarter to go. We've got the football, but uh, again in the hole, we've got about a second down and about oh, 18 or so, I guess. Can't see the spot right now, but a long way to go to get this first down. If we can do that, you know, I think we'll be in, be in a position to go down the field and score. Expert health care close to homes. At 12.05, McLean Street, Newport, Harris Hospital. Quality professional service at the Harris Hospital. Expert health care close to home. Christmas shopping, all your electronic toys, your little gadgets, your little boats, your little cars, pickup trucks, remote control, all at the Radio Shack, Newport Electronics. Do your Christmas shopping now. David, it's a lot of people like to start in September, so we've only got about three months to go. Time to go ahead and start. Big plays, a couple of big plays right here for Newport. We've got about second down and 18. Need to get that first down and, and get back on track again. Holding penalty was a big one against the Hounds as we start the fourth quarter of action. And the, Hound, and the Hounds trail by five, 33 to 28. Kendall will be the split man. Out of your screen to the left. Harris drops back, looks, wants to throw. Kendall stopped on the play and overthrows two defenders. Newport going for it all on second 18. David may have been some miscommunication or something right there. Kendall stopped and, uh, and Zach threw the ball deep and uh, good coverage downfield. Was hoping not for an interception. We avoided that, but again, Third down in about 18, what do you do right here? We have to come up with something out of the bag because this, this is a very important play, maybe the big play of the second half right here. I like a screen pass. Little Ellis coming out of the backfield. Give him a chance to run the football with a little room. Mosby will be the split receiver on the left. Brand is in the slot. Brand, motion. Here comes the blitz, and here's the screen to the left to Little Ellis, and it's overthrown. So, Forest City's defense 
holds, and their offense will get the football back once again. They've had three possessions all in the third quarter, two for touchdowns, one for a turnover. David, a hard charging four city defense on that play. They got in there and got some penetration, just kind of disrupted the whole play, and there was never really a chance to get that play off. We need another big punt by Busby right here, and we need one more turnover. Boy, it'd certainly help, wouldn't it? Good snap. Busby's punt. Fielded at the 45. They try to do the reverse, and they do. And Newport has great coverage, but the little guy is going to break some tackles. He's at the 35, and they still can't get him down. Golette finally tackled about the 35-yard line. I thought you might see the turnover right there if he tried to hand the football coming back to Golette coming this way. Boy, we hit just a fraction of a second too late. I sure thought it was going to happen, David, but we had, we had some excellent coverage down there. We saw the handoff coming, but still a good job on the on the play right there by our kick coverage. Got them in not at least great field position right here. We need to step up and stop them or get a fumble. McCain has been the difference the last two drives. It seems as though the Newport offense is having problems stopping the quarterback on the option. Herbert Lewis and Kenny Black will make the adjustments. Split right, unbalanced line, second man through is Gallette. Across the 40 to the 41, a gain of six, maybe seven. Give him seven on the play, too much on first down. Kathy and Brand come in, Kendall and Holt go out. This is a quality four city football club. Two quality football teams you see here on the replay. Second man through. Gallette tackled short of the first down. That'll bring up third down and one. At the 43 yard line, must go just beyond the 44. 10-42 remaining in the contest. It's a 33-28 lead in favor of the Mustangs. David, absolutely must stop them right here. If we, you know, if we don't stop them on this drive, it'll be a tough night to try to get back into it. Big play right here, third and down in a long one. Hound defense must dig in. Look for the quarterback sneak. They've had some success with it on the night. Second man through. Gets the first down after a second effort, but nailed by Big Eye Ingram. Gallette across the 45, first down and 10 for four City with 10-14 to play in the football game. Your complete auto headquarters for new and used or program vehicles is located at 520 Malcolm Avenue in Newport. Their phone number is 523-3672. Lakeside Chevrolet Buick Geo. Thinking about selling your property and want to know what it might be worth in today's market, call Ed Cunningham at 523-4447. He's the principal broker of Riverboat Real Estate. First down and 10 at the 45. Quarterback on a busted play. Ingram there with the tackle after a gain of about one. That's what you need on first down, good play defense. 940 remaining in this contest, the Hounds trail by five. David, you mentioned uh, the big play on first down. We haven't been getting those. A lot of times they've been in a second and five, second and three type situation. Here we got second down and nine. That really helps out. Big guys really made a couple of big plays in a row. Unbalanced line to the right. Full back up the middle. Breaks a tackle at the 50 and first down yardage down to about the 44, and I think he's got enough for the first down. First down for Forest City. Clock will move when the chains are set. Time not really a major factor right now. Possession of the football is. Exactly right, David. Time not a critical factor right now, but if they score here, it obviously will be. Very tough to come back, you know, midway through the fourth quarter from two scores down. But if we can stop them here, we're still right in it with plenty of time. I totally agree. I think, obviously, this is the drive that the Hounds must Come up with a stop. Big Ingram down there at the defensive left tackle. Quarterback sneak. Look at McCain. 
Gets seven on the quarterback sneak. Bring up second down and three. And the Newport Greyhounds won a timeout. Just a reminder that you can hear Greyhound football live on radio station KLLN each and every Friday night beginning at 7.30 p.m. Bud Black, the voice of the Greyhound, is joined by Paul Duggar. They'll provide the most exciting broadcast available. Join Bud on KLLN Radio 90.9 FM for the live radio broadcast. Don't miss the excitement. It's coming Friday night. They have a timeout in Newport. Coach Lewis is in the huddle talking to his defensive team, uh, trying to anticipate what's coming up, maybe making some adjustments. So we need, really need to be, make some big plays right here. It's just extremely critical. There's eight minutes and 39 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Still plenty of time if we stop them here. If we don't, it's going to be very tough. This is a football team that couldn't put a point on the board against the Wynn Yellow Jackets. 33 on the board against the Greyhounds. Got 45 against Mariana. I didn't see any of the film of Forest City and Win, but talked with Coach Don Campbell this past week. Coach Campbell said they were a quality football team, said they just had some turnovers, some bad breaks. Marched the football up and down the field all night long. It's real obvious here, David. Uh, you know, the wishbone offense, these guys, I'm not, not really sure, but I don't think they're used to running the wishbone. It takes a while to get used to that, and their quarterback's really done a good job tonight, and their backs have really ran hard. McCain, their quarterback, has been the difference. Unbalanced, line to the left. Pitch on the ground once again. Gallette gets it. Here's where this kid is dangerous. Finally brought down by Robert Alcorn and a big loss and a big play on second down and three. Loss is back to the 45-yard line. That'll bring up third down and 21. Great stunt that time. Mike, Michael Brand coming from the defensive end. They have an excellent play by Alcorn getting a hold of him. That was Robert Alcorn last week. I think I called him Bobby. Uh, Bobby's probably not on that field, but Robert doing a good job. I'm sure Bobby's real proud of him. Look for Norman, the split receiver who comes to the bottom of your screen right here, number 15. He's a game breaker. Across the middle, incomplete, and the Hound defense has done what they had to do, and that was hold for City, and they're going to get the football back. Robert Kendall will go deep for the punt return team. We have seven minutes and 39 seconds to play in the football game, and the Hounds trail it 33 to 28. David, we're right in this football game. Robert Kendall's going to be deep. He is due a long punt return. Don't want to jinx him or anything, but he is so overdue for a big return. Kendall will quickly go deep. Punter stands at the 33-yard line. High snap. And it's blocked! It's blocked, and the ball is at the 24. Picked up by Kenneth Tate, and Kenneth Tate will go 24 yards for the touchdown. The Hounds have blocked a punt and have taken the lead. Holy cow, what a great play by the Newport Greyhound special teams. Big time play. We needed that so bad. Kenneth Tate, he had the big play on the fumble recovery last week that was called back. Excellent job getting in there blocking the punt. I'm not sure who it was, but a great play by whoever blocked the punt. It was a high snap. Tate got that one, picked it up, ran about 21 yards. A huge play and no whistle to bring him back this time. Big time play. Newport leads 34 to 33. What a football game. Hey, hey! I'm sure we'll go for two here. No question about this one. The Hounds have retaken the lead, 34 to 33 on the block punt. I saw Alcorn there. I don't know whether or not he was the one that got the block, but I did see him there. And Tate picks it up, rumbles 21, you say? I think I'd call it 24. Here are the Hounds to go for two. Harris rolls to the right, runs to the end zone to the right side. Did he make it? Nope. No good. What a ball game on our hands. The special teams come up with the big play. 
We were talking about Kendall needing to come up with a big play. He wasn't even involved in it. Good thing about this, he got the rest to play. Exactly right. Robert doesn't get a chance to rest, but he ought to be in great shape right now. Both sides of the field, the fans are on their feet. Boy, this is a great football game. High scoring. We certainly did not expect this kind of scoring. Uh, coming down here about the high score predicted was something like 27 to 20 amongst the five of us, but we're already looking at 34 to 33, 67 points. Seven and a half minutes to go. There could still be a lot more scoring. And on my little score sheet that I've been using for the past 10 years, I've finally run out of room. First time ever. Good indication of what kind of game this is. A lot of great sponsors bringing you Greyhound football here on Cable 15. Riverboat Trader is coming your way this Wednesday and Thursday. Dylan to kick. Fielded. At the 14, Gallette. Across the 30 to the 32-yard line. <coughs> Possibly 33, and Four City will set up shop there. The Newport defense held their last, last time out on the field. Randy, what a game. Great game, David. Time for a big play by the defense. We've seen a couple of them in the second half. And I really feel like we're going to get a big play right here. Look for this wishbone to come at us, but we're, we're ready for the task, I think. Big guy calling the timeout. Did we have enough guys on the field? No. Looks like we were short one player on the field, and you know, hopefully that's not a costly timeout. It's a catch kind of thing you absolutely do not want to see in a situation like that. Hopefully the lost timeout doesn't come out back to haunt us. We've had a couple of those in this football game, and. You know, a timeout could be critical at the end because, as we said, the last team to get this football may win it, and we may need that. Greyhound football is being brought to you by Union Planners Bank of Northeast Arkansas, by Arkansas State University BB Newport Victory Boulevard at the Air Base, Modern Woodman of America, 106 South State Street in Newport, Boss Equipment Company in Tuckerman, your New Holland dealer. Also brought to you in part by Kentucky Fried Chicken, 2200 Malcolm in Newport, and the Taylor dealerships, Joe Taylor Ford and Joe Taylor Chrysler. Seven minutes, 23 seconds remaining in the football game. The Hounds have taken a one-point lead, 34 to 33, thanks to a blocked punt that was picked up by Kenneth Tate, run in from 21 yards out. Right, David, the big plays have made such a difference in the second half. We really don't have very many yardage, we, uh, very much yardage in this second half. We've had the ball very few plays offensively, but we're ahead, and that's all that really matters. Normant splits to the bottom of the screen, out of the screen now. Unbalanced line to this side. Fullback tripped up after he goes across the 35-yard line to about the 36. Boy, the lightning. Well, David, again, second down, six yards to go. Our defense really needs to uh, get with it right here and stop them right here. We're, we've got about eight or nine men up on the line of scrimmage right here. It's so critical that you stop them. Second down and six. Same formation with the unbalanced line. Fullback up the middle. Near first down yardage. I think he's a little short. He's a good half yard short to a yard. 6.37, the clock will start and does so. A one point Greyhound lead, 34 to 33. Four City with the football, third down and a short one at the 42 yard line. Quarterback sneak for a first down. Michael 
48-yard line is where the football will be spotted with 6-0-9 remaining in the contest. Greyhound football brought to you in part by Jackson's Funeral Home and the Jackson Griffin Insurance Company Neighborhood Cleaners. Located at 101 Lindley Street in Newport, White River Ambulance and Paramedic with two locations to serve you, West Main and North Pecan Street. Premier Video, their location on Pratt Square and new place of business coming soon. Tate is out. Second man through. Big gain on first down for Four City with 5.48 in the clock moving. Carl Johnson with the tackle, a pickup of six for Four City. Second down and four. Well, I'll tell you what, Dave, when that guy went up towards the line of scrimmage, it almost looked like number 20 that we saw last week. Really a big and intimidating look going up towards the line of scrimmage. But Carl Johnson, I think Kenyon Miller was also around there, you know, locked up, made the play. Second down and four. Split receiver to the top of the screen. Wishbone set. McCain. Option play right. First down yardage, and Michael McCain struggles to the 35, across the 35, and second effort gets the football down to the 34-yard line. First down and 10 for Forest City with 5-10 remaining in the game. You got to have a little pride here, defense. Big plays right here. We, we, you know, we've shown it again. We talked about it earlier the ability to make the big plays when it's absolutely crunch time. This team has done that this year so far, and maybe we can do it again right here. Boy, I mean, Four City's had the ball more than twice that we've had it in the second half. We've only had about 10 offensive plays. They've had about 25. It's first down and 10 from the 34-yard line. McCain is directing this offense. Quick pitch left. Flag. Flag down, and I hope it's something against the blue. Pick up of about five yards, and let's see what the call is going to be. Holding. Holding against Four City. Oh, big break for the Hounds right there. Big break for the Hounds. Penalty flag is right about the 32. so that'll move it back to the 41 yard line. First down and 17. Well, they move it to the 42, so we'll call it 18. First down and 18 from the 42. Four thirty-five remaining in the contest. The Hounds lead it by one. McCain in trouble. He's still there. He throws deep. Incomplete. Who had him? We couldn't drag him down. McCain trying to shake somebody off the ankles. Hung in there very well. Still got the pass off, but it was overthrown. Stops the clock with 428 to play in the ball game. Ball at the 42, second down and 18 yards to go. Boy, David, nerve-wracking, nail-biting foot, uh, football game right here. Big play, second down, 17. We need to shut them down. If they throw, expect Kendall to be somewhere. McCain to throw. Brand almost got him. Long pass, double coverage to Norman, and he made the catch. And I mean, it was a great catch by Norman inside the 15 to the 13 yard line. We had guys all over McCain, and Norman kept his feet in bounds and made the catch at the 13 against double coverage. David, we've read about him this week, the big playability he has. He certainly showed it there, and an excellent job like a pro receiver, kind of deadening his legs before he fell out of bounds to keep him in bounds. Uh, we had a good penetration and, and a rush on the quarterback again. I almost had the sack, but just barely got it off in a big play. Four minutes and 20 seconds to play in the contest. Four City on the move once again. Newport had them backed up after the big holding penalty. Oh, 
Option play, right, McCain. Breaking tackles down to about the six yard line. Gain of six. Second down and four. Carl Johnson in on the tackle. Three fifty remaining in the ball game. Four City knocking on the door. Ball remains on the six. Second down and a long three or short four. First man through, a gain of one. Down to the five. Four City can get a first down. What a football game this has been. Boy, David, just a typical wishbone type offense. They have really dominated time possession in the second half. They've run the play, had about 35 or 36 plays to Newport's 10 right here. Just really dominant time of possession, but we're still in the lead right now if we can stop them right here. Greyhound football brought to you in part by George Kell Motors, Newport Federal Savings Bank, and boy, there was the lightning again. The U.S. Pizza Company. Harris Hospital on McLean Street, Newport Electronics, your Radio Shack dealer, Lakeside Chevrolet Buick Geo, Riverboat Real Estate, the Dairy Queen on Malcolm, New York Life and Securities, and Brands Body Shop, split receiver and to the left, and here is Forest City in the wishbone. Under three minutes to play in the contest. Quarterback McCain is hit and dropped for no gain and maybe a loss of two or three on the play. Awesome. Field goal unit here. Fifty remaining. The clock stopped. I don't know why. Now they continue with the clock. Going to bring up fourth down. The loss is back to the eight-yard line, and I would expect to see the field goal team here. They stopped the clock again for some reason. I don't know why. A lot of confusion down there. Now the clock starts. Here's what Four City's going to do. They're going to try the field goal. The kicker is putting his shoe on, but they're going to let the 25-second clock run down to about two to three seconds to take clock off the game clock. Run it down to six and call the timeout. Boy, Dave, you really expect them to go for the field goal here. Their kicker is really, a, you know, it's appeared to be excellent on the earlier kicks he's attempted. Uh, just a good kicker. Uh, you know, if he makes it right here, he'll make it a 36 to 34 game for City, and uh, that may mean we'll have the ball last. And as we've said, the team that has the ball last has a good chance to win in this football game. So, you know, we want him to miss this field goal, but if he makes it, it's not over yet by a long shot. You know what, now that I look back, you know what I think happened on the play? I think McCain was going to take the football and just try to move to his left a couple of yards to set up the field goal attempt from straight on. Because, I mean, we haven't seen that much penetration all night where McCain gets knocked back a couple of yards, but we did have good penetration. McCain trying to go to his left, and we just tackled him for the big loss. Right, we had three or four guys penetrate in, especially on that right side right there, and stop him. Uh, you really kind of expect them to try to get in the end zone while they move the football, but again, they got a great field goal kicker, and maybe they felt like that'd be enough to win the football game. We've got a long way to go. You hate to speculate, but as you say, a lot of time left in the football game. If they hit the field goal, it'll give them a two-point lead. It's going to be a 25-yard field goal attempt from Norman. How about wide left? How about standing up? We've got to stand up for this one. Huge play. Watch those Greyhounds coming in from the outside. Robert Kendall's on one side. He's come close to blocking some kicks in the past and look for him to get in there and fly out and try to lay out and get the, get the block. What you don't want to do is get off sides on fourth and five and give them a first down. Here's the snap. Kick is up, and it is wide right. Wide right. Wide right. Four City misses the field goal. Trey Stafford right under that goal post to call it. And there is.
there's going to be some argument from the four city coaches. David, it appeared to be wide right. Of course, we have a horrible angle over here, but I thought it was wide right all the way. And, uh, you know, I think he made the right call, but there's no way to tell from here. We'd have to have an end zone camera to know for sure. But it sure appeared to be wide right, and I think it was a correct call. We've got to run 2.07 off the clock right here, though. It's a long way from over. What a break for the Hounds. It looked good, and then it looked like it went wide right. And the Hounds temporarily hold on to the lead, 34 to 33. David, we've got to get one first down right here. One first down. Big play from Sean Ellis would help. Harris to Sean for about two. Maybe just one. Two minutes to play and the clock will move. 153 in the clock moving. Hounds will have to snap the football about the 125 mark. Stay in the huddle. 18, 17, 16, 15 on the 25 second clock. David, we've talked the last couple of ball games about running that 25 second clock down to two or three before you snap it, and I think they've learned some lessons over the last couple of weeks, and they've got it down in single figures. It's at four, three, two, one. Harris quick pitch to Little Ellis. Little Ellis in trouble at the 20 yard line, and now Four City will call a timeout with 117 to play in the football game. Third down and nine. Four City does a great job of saving some timeouts for down the stretch here. They've done a good job of that, David. It's a long time to go. We've, you know, if we make the first down here right here, the ball game's over. If we don't, we're going to have to punt the football, and it'll be a nail-biter to the end, I guarantee you. But I wouldn't count our offense out right here. The Coach Kepler has shown the, you know, the, the ability to make some big calls in situations like this. It's hard to tell what he might call right here. You want to keep the clock running, but at the same time, you've got to get the first down. And, uh, you know, it kind of be interesting to see what's called right here. Oh, I know what I'd do. Tell me. I'd look over to the assistants and say, <laughs> hey, guys, make a call for me. Coach Mathis, make a call for me. <laughs> It's third down and nine. There's a minute 17 remaining in this ball game, and it has been a seesaw affair. My score sheet has run out of room for the first time in the history of me keeping score sheets. <laughs> it's been an exciting football game, an offensive battle. Huge plays here in the second half. Like I said, Newport's had the ball only about 13 or so plays in this second half. Uh, Four City's had it about three times that much, but the bottom line is 34 to 33 with one minute, 17 seconds to go. First down right here, and let's go to the house. Sports starts raining. Third down and nine ball on the 21 yard line. Split receiver is Kendall. Out of your screen. Motion is brand to the right. Offsides play, and that is a very big play, provided we were not in motion. Dead ball, offsides, Forest City. That's going to make it third and four. You have some plays in your offensive game plan on third and four. You don't have a lot of plays. In other words, I mean, you have some choices. You can throw on third and four. You can run quick on third and four. You can run power on third and four. You can run option on third and four. On third and nine, you don't have all those options. That's exactly right. A lot of things you can do right here. You expect, it, you know, expect you definitely to run the football right here, which helps you run some clock, you know, along with everything else and gives you a better chance of getting that first down. Expect Four City to call timeout, provided Newport does not gain a first down. Another and play. Another offsides play, as Randy called it, on third and four, and Four City does not jump this time. Right, Dave. Well, if we'd got that offside play, that may have been the ball game right there, and the Four City coaches would have been extremely disappointed in their players, but they did not jump that time. They were ready for it, and uh, we've got to make it on our own right here. Need to get some good blocking by the offensive line and a good run right here. I think most football coaches will tell you that when you line up and practice every day, you have a lot of plays that you know you can get four yards on if you execute it properly. Not every play is designed to score. You have some plays that are designed to score. I mean, you have 11 guys and you only have 10 guys or virtually really nine blocking 11. So not every play is designed to score. You have a bunch of plays on third and four that is designed to pick up four and five yards. 
That's exactly right, David. I'm sure that Coach Keppel is thinking about that right now. Your offensive line is, you know, is the key to this thing right here. If they do their job, we'll get four yards and we'll go to the house with a victory. But uh, you know, it's very critical that our offensive line do their job. All 11 players have to be executing on this play one bust, and it can you know throw the whole play out of sync. But we can definitely make this four yards. Kendall will come split to the left. Brand is in the slot and he's in motion. Harris op or coming left. Harris in trouble and tackled for a short gain, if any. And Four City will call timeout with 1.08 to play in the ball game. Newport will have fourth down and the same four yards. Well, David, I think it was—I thought it was an excellent call by Coach Keppel right there, the kind of the bootleg type action right there with Harris. But just a, you know, an excellent job for City. Had a couple of guys stay at home on defense, and that's what you got to do. But I think it was an excellent call and one that a lot of times you'll get that kind of yardage on. Big play right here, Busby to punt the ball. He's had a couple of good kicks tonight. We've got to have some excellent coverage, and then big play time. It's going to be heartbreak time or heartache time on defense. Hounds led in this football game 14 to three at the end of one quarter. They led 22 to 18 at the half, trailed 33 to 28. At the end of three, Four City has not scored in the fourth quarter. Hounds only with one touchdown, and that was the 21 yard return of a block punt by Kenneth Tate. So it'll be fourth down, the Hounds must punt. I think he tried to punt it out of bounds. Exactly right, David. If they send their deep, man, they're running. Well, they're backing up now. Looked like they were going to try to just stay in a pretty basic defense, but don't want the big return here. Absolutely have to avoid that and make them earn the touchdown on a drive. Snap is good. Busby's kick is good. It's short, and it's fielded at the 47 to the 50. Guy still on his feet across the 45 and run down from behind by Isaac Hagwood. A and a penalty flag back upfield at the 38. Let's hope. I see Dean Holt pointing towards Four Cities in. Illegal use of the hands against Four City. Great penalty there. <laughs> Great job, yeah. Guys down everywhere on the field. One Mustang, one Greyhound. As you see coming into your screen. Penalty flag is back upfield at the 38. <laughs> 57 seconds remaining in the contest. That's Cunningham there, 29, who returned the punt. New coach for Four City this year. Of course, this is the first time Newport has played Four City since 1970. So you don't have a lot of tendencies. You don't know a lot about trick plays. You don't know just exactly what Four City has up their sleeve. Be prepared for anything. All right, David. Defense just has to be, you know, stay disciplined right here. Stay at home and do your job. You know, Four City's got a new coach from Bismarck here. He's installed the wishbone type offense. You know, normally with the wishbone, you see the triple option, but Four City has a tremendous wide receiver right here, and you can expect them to at least go for him once or twice out of this thing but they've got 56 yards to go with 57.6 seconds remaining. Ball at the 44, as Randy said, 56 yards away from a victory. And now an official's timeout. For sprinklers on in the end zone. <laughs> sprinklers are on. Galen, get a shot of that if you could. Come down to the end zone here. <laughs> we knew it was going to rain sometime tonight. <laughs> they've turned the sprinklers on. <laughs> That's unreal. <laughs> This has got to be a first in any level of football. I don't think there's ever been a sprinkler come on in a football game in the history of the world. Yeah, I have seen them do that in, in a pro game. Okay, I've never seen it before. Of course, you know, not many high school fields have sprinkler right. system. If one ever comes on in Newport, we're in big trouble. You bet. We've got a scoop there. Okay, now they got it. They got it turned off. You know, it's now as we film on Friday night, it's exactly 10 o'clock. And I'll bet you that they're on timers and they're designed to come on at 10 o'clock. That's probably right, David. <laughs> Several years ago, I do remember seeing it in a pro game. I've never seen it. 
Might have been a pro baseball game. First down and 10 for Forest City with 57 seconds to play in the contest, and McCain wants to throw. He's in trouble, and he is down. Dean Holt. Kenyon Miller. And Kenyon Miller on the tackle, and the clock continues to move with 45, 44, 43. Forest City tries to stop the clock, and they're going to be penalized for having a man in motion and also have a man down. There's 35 seconds to play. Forest City was just trying to stop the clock. McCain throwing the football to the ground, but once the ball was snapped, they had a man in motion, so thus the penalty. All right, David, two things going right for us right there. Of course, no yards on the play and then the penalty. I tell you what, I absolutely despise that play, but I was glad to see them run that right there. I always hate to see my, the team that I'm rooting for do that because, you know, it usually just turns out to be a wasted play and usually take too much time to run it anyway. But uh, we'll see what happens right here. I tell you what, regardless of what happens in the football game, I mean, if they throw a 60-yard touchdown pass or whatever, it has been a classic football game between two football teams. My heart would be broken just like it. Come on, defense! Come on, defense! Let's go. Newport just needs to play prevent. I'm sure that Coach Kenny Black's going to have his kids back. Don't give up the huge play right here. I mean, let them have 10 or 15 yards. It's going to be hard to score that way. Just avoid the big play. Second down and about 12. Come on, defense. Get the quarterback. Everybody to the right, McCain to throw. McCain across the middle, it's complete. Good, good defensive play right there by Newport. You give them 12, 13 yards. And the clock will start as soon as the ball is set by referee Brad Davidson. 29 seconds remaining in the game. The clock will start when the ball is snapped. Newport in to prevent defense. McCain at the 45, clock is moving. Motion against left guard and left tackle moved over there. Against Four City is going to be called. Illegal procedure with 22.5 seconds to play in this football game. Once again, the clock will start once the ball is set. 22.5 remaining. In the football game, the clock does start. 21 seconds, McCain to the line, split and slot to the bottom of the screen. Don't get beat deep. McCain drops, rolls across the middle, it is complete. 10, 9, 8, 7, will Four City get another play? Six, four, three, two, one, and the Hounds win it! 34 to 33, and your Newport Greyhounds are 3 and 0 and undefeated on the year as they come on the road and defeat the Four City Mustangs. Boy, David, what a great victory! This football team is 3 and 0. As we've said before, a lot of people thought they would be 0 and 3 or had the chance to be 0 and 3, but what a chase uh, of show of character right here by the Greyhounds. They got down. The momentum was definitely in Four City's uh, favor right there, but we've come back, showed that tradition of Greyhound football, and what a great victory. What a great trip home again tonight. Boy, it certainly is our second football game on the road, and the Hounds win it 34-33. to 33. And I don't know how much time we'll have to recap. What is, no, no, another non-recap? Right. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to stand here and uh, figure up all these stats again. We'll get the people can you know, have other opportunities to see the stats. But it's dark up here. It's going to be hard to add it up. So uh, let's just try to get on out of here before it starts raining. More importantly, the Hounds are 3-0 and on the year. Four City missing the 25-yard field goal late in the ball game. And then the Newport offense coming out, having to get a first down, did not do that. Four City got the football back, had a couple of penalties. Hey, I tell you what, you got to be lucky sometimes. You got to be good and make yourself some breaks. And the Hounds did it tonight. We're 3 and 0. We're 3 and 0. We're 3 and 0. And you've got to be good, too. Main thing about it right there. I tell you what, what a great victory for Greyhound football. Maybe this is a team of destiny. The Hounds will be on the road this Friday night, coming up Friday night at Ridgecrest. You'll see the broadcast next Saturday morning and next Tuesday night. Galen Farmer, once again, an outstanding job as you see the Hounds beginning to celebrate.
Another victory for the Newport Greyhounds as the Hounds win it. Can you get us or is it too dark? Oh, we're coming into the screen right there. The Greyhounds win it. Go Hounds! Greyhounds win it by the score of 34 to 33. We have enjoyed it once again. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. For Galen, for Randy, I'm David Black. So long, everybody.